In this lecture we are going to talk about hash tables and hashing. Hash table, also known as dictionary or map, is a data structure where data are stored in the table and each data record in this table is accessible by key. Hash tables are very fast in terms of deleting, inserting and finding a certain element by key. All these operations have average constant time complexity. Hash tables are widely used in different kinds of computer programs. Some applications of hash tables are pattern matching algorithms, databases, spell checking algorithms, compilers and interpreters, network routers and servers. The underlying data structure in hash table is an array. Array is a simple data structure where elements can be accessed by index very fast in constant time. The hash table expands this idea by changing index to a key of any type. The key can be a number, text or any object defined by programmer himself. The keys serve as indexes in hash table. And the values associated with keys are stored in the underlying array. A big question is how these keys are mapped to a certain indexes of the array. Let's say we have a hash table where keys are strings. We have four strings which form a sentence I like hash table. Let's say each string is associated with a number. For example, word I is associated with one, like is associated with five, hash is associated with 10 and table is associated with zero. So the records of the hash table are the key value pairs, where in this particular example, string is a key and number is a value. Now we need to convert these keys to a certain indexes of the array and save the associated values into the array. Now the question is, how can we convert string to number? We could use the memory address of the string, since it is a unique non-negative integer. It would ensure that delete, insert and search operation would be carried out in a constant time. In each operation we would just look at the memory address of the string and the position of the associated value would be known. Still, this approach has two major problems. Imagine we want to add another key, which is also a word i. The other i would have the different memory address than the previous i. We are unable to distinguish between two identical words. It is bad since the key in hash table is unique and if we have the same key, it should point to the same position, otherwise it would bring some confusion when we try to search for the, or delete the value associated with word i. The second problem of this approach is even more obvious. The underlying array would take huge memory space for storing these key value pairs. In fact, it would take the entire computer memory. This is totally impractical. The generalized problem of hash table is how to map a smaller set of keys into a hash table when the universe of possible keys is significantly larger than the smaller set of keys we want to map to a hash table. A hash function should help us to solve this problem. A good hash function should convert the key to a non-negative integer index. It should compute the index as fast as possible and it should distribute the key value pairs uniformly in the hash table. It is important that hash function would always produce the same result for the same keys. It is desirable, but not always possible, to produce different results for the different keys. Ok, now we know some theory behind the hash function. Let's find out if we could find a better solution for mapping these words to the underlying array. We have reduced the size of our array, now its capacity is equal to 8, and we need to define some hash function which would do the work for us. We can define the hash function as follows. First, convert the string to a sequence of digits based on ISC II table. Second, take the first six digits of the sequence. These operations would convert the strings into these non-negative integers. These numbers are too big in order to use them directly as indexes, so we need to reduce it to fit into the index space, which is between 0 
and 7. We can achieve this by dividing each number by the size of the array and take reminder as an index. In other words, we should apply the modulo operation for each number. 73 divided by 8, reminder is 1. We can add the associated value at the position 1. 108,105 divided by 8, reminder is also 1. This is a problem. We are going to talk about it in a minute. For now, let's just finish the mapping. At least now the second eye points to the correct position. Instead of having a different place for its value, we now update the previous value with a new one. Ok, now let's talk about these strange cases. When different keys point to the same index, the situation is called collision. Collisions in hash tables are a well-known problem. In fact, there are no good universal practical solution for solving collisions. A good hash function should distribute the keys uniformly, therefore collisions should not occur. But in practice, it is difficult to achieve perfect uniform distribution. In practice, there are many different types of hash functions for different types of keys and for different types of implementations of hash tables, but still, these different approaches can minimize the collisions at best, but not eliminate them entirely. However, if we define a certain restrictions for hash table and its keys, we could achieve quite good results. Here's an example. Let's change the underlying array size to 7. We have chosen 7 because it is a prime number. If we divide a number, by the prime number and took the reminder as a result, we would definitely get better results. Let's use the same hash function and see how mapping works now. We divide 73 by 7, the reminder is 3, this is our index and we store the value at this index. 108,105 divided by 7, reminder is 4, we can store the associated value at the index, we carry out the same operation for the rest of the keys. You can see that this time we have mapped the keys a lot better. In fact, we have avoided the collision at all. Although, the hash function we used did not produce any collision, it still did not eliminate it entirely and there will be cases where collisions will occur. Let's talk about hash function in detail. As you already know, the hash function should map the different keys to different indexes of the underlying array of the hash table. You also know that there are a lot of different hash functions applied for different type of keys and hash tables. The good hash function itself should satisfy two basic properties. First, it should be as fast as possible to compute and second, it should minimize the number of collisions. For a fixed size hash table, usually fixed size hash functions, independent from the table size, are used. The result of this kind of hash function can be directly applied for indexing the table. For the resizable hash table, usually the hash function takes two parameters. One is the key and second is the table size. This kind of hash function we have used in our example with strings. As you remember, in this case, hashing is separated in two steps. First, compute the prehash of the key. Second, reduce the prehash to a current table size interval. Usually, two methods for this are applied. Division by the table size and using of its divisions reminder as an index. That is what we have used. Another method is to use a bit masking and bit shifting, if the table size itself is a power of 2. As I mentioned before, there are various hash functions. Here, some of them. Folding, mid squares, division hashing, algebraic coding, multiplicative hashing, unique permutation hashing, Fibonacci hashing, character or word length folding, rolling hash, radix conversion hashing, and there are many more. In this lecture we are not going to focus on particular implementation of aforementioned hash functions. Ok, let's turn to collisions. As you already know, collisions are unavoidable in any hash table. Therefore we need a strategy for resolving collisions. In fact, we have two different strategies for this. One is called separate chaining, sometimes also called open hashing, 
other is called open addressing, also known as closed hashing. The key idea behind separate chaining is that each element of the underlying array stores not exact value, but additional data structure instead. Each value associated with the key is stored in the data structure. If collision occurs, we simply add other value to the additional data structure. In order to retrieve the value, we first need to find the index via hash function, and then we need to carry out the additional search in the data structure. The most popular data structure for this is a linked list. But other data structures like dynamic arrays, self-balancing binary search trees, even inner hash tables are also applied in some of the implementations. We should keep in mind that this strategy brings some time and space overhead for a hash table and its operations. In the worst case, if we used bad, bad hash function, the values would be stored in one linked list. In this case, the time complexity of basic operation would be ON. But if the hash table is tuned well, we have good hash function and the table size is proper, hash table with separate chaining would have constant average time complexity for basic operations. The other strategy for dealing with collisions is open addressing. Let's say we get a collision, but we don't want to use additional data structure for storing colliding values. So the question is, what can we do instead? And the answer is, we can search for the first free space in the same array. So we need to traverse the array up to the first empty slot. And add the value here. In this case, we have to pay attention to one detail. Let's say key three collided with key two. Therefore, after the search, key three was put to the last position of the array. Now imagine we have deleted the key n, which was positioned in the array somewhere in the middle of the previous search pad for inserting value 3. We cannot assign the freed up space to null, which marks the empty slot. Instead, we must use a plug value and consider it not as a free space, because otherwise, if we try to look up for key 3, which had a collision and was inserted by applying a search, we wouldn't be able to find it since search pad would be corrupted. We can apply different methods to find the first free space for colliding value. The simplest method is linear probing, where we apply the linear search by increasing the following index by 1. The other method is called quadratic probing. Here the following index in the search sequence is obtained by squaring the shift from the start position. In this case we jump over the array by a larger step. We could also use method called double hashing. In this case we would use two different hash functions. If collision occurred, we would use the other hash function to determine the other index of the value which collides. In this case, the colliding value could get the position before or behind the colliding index. In addition to three aforementioned methods, it is worth to mention more complex approaches of probing like coalescent hashing, cuckoo hashing, hopscotch hashing. In general, the open addressing saves some memory, but this is only when the entries are small and the load factor is not too small. Also, open addressing has a cache advantage, but this is only when the load factor is not too big. Open addressing strategy brings an additional issue to the hash table. The probing algorithms tend to cluster the keys in a certain areas of hash table. These clusters affect the search time negatively. Therefore, the hash table with the open addressing will perform much slower when it have a lot of elements in it. This is due to high number of clusters. The separate chaining and open addressing have their own advantages and drawbacks. The main properties of separate chaining are as follows. In separate chaining, usually cache is exploited less effectively. It uses more memory, it has fewer requirements for a hash function, hash function must only distribute the keys uniformly. Performance is more stable until the table reaches its capacity. The main properties of open addressing are the following. It has cache advantage, especially with 
small size elements and when the table is not completely filled. It uses less memory if entries are small and load factor is not too small. It puts more requirements on hash function. Hash function must not only distribute keys uniformly, but also must minimize clustering. Performance in this kind of hash table drops dramatically when load factor grows beyond 0.7. The key metric of hash table is a load factor. It is calculated as the ratio between number of keys stored in the table and the number of slots of the underlying array. When the load factor approaches to 1, the hash table operations become slower. Therefore, when a certain load factor threshold is reached, the size of hash table is increased. Usually hash table size is doubled. The memory for new array needs to be allocated and all keys from previous table need to be rehashed. The values associated with those keys need to be stored in the new locations of newly created array. The common values of load factor threshold are 0 0.7, 0 0.75, 0 0.8, 0 0.85 and similar. The key points of this lecture would be the following. Hash table is widely used data structure where data is stored in the table and each data record in this table is accessible by key. The deletion, insertion and search operations in hash table have average constant time. In order to delete, insert or find a certain value in the hash table, the hash function is used, which converts the key of an, any type to an index of the array where all values are stored. The hash function may generate the same index for different keys. This situation is called collision. In order to deal with collision in hash tables, two strategies are applied. Separate chaining or open addressing. Thank you for your attention.